For this round, let's activate Icarus first. I think the first thing we're going to do is move into this space, and let's go ahead and try and open up this chest. So that's our first action. We'll have to draw a trap, and we have poisonous gas. Unless save, each hero within one area suffers poison one. Let's go, Mr. Lucky. We got it. <laughs> You guys, this is just insane. I mean, all of these things don't do anything to Icarus. It's amazing. All right, we'll grab our treasure, and we get one single treasure in there. We're going to find a greedy sting. This is a pierce dagger. Hmm. Yeah, I'm probably just going to leave it there. I don't, I don't have any space to hold anything else. From there, we'll take our third movement and then use our dash to get back to here. Then let's have Ariel go. First thing she's going to do is use her action to allow Tristan to move. He'll move one two and knock over Ariel. One, two, and then three. And I don't believe we have line of sight on that shadow token. Looking up here, I'm pretty sure, yeah, if I'm going to do X to X, perfect. I didn't quite want to have that activated yet. I think then I'll have Ariel just move one, two, and that's it. I don't want her to reveal that shadow token. I mean, I guess I could have her attack it. Yeah, but if we move here, we also have to reveal whatever's here, and I don't know what that is either. So I'm going to hold I have an idea. Ariel's activation has now been completed. I'm going to go for Thorgar. Thorgar is going to activate his companion, Cedric. Cedric's going to move one, two. He is immune to hindrances, which is really nice. He will reveal shadow tokens, from what I understand, but he will not reveal waypoint tokens. So this way we can at least see what we have here. We have just one regular enemy, so I'm going to have to take my enemy discard pile, shuffle it, and draw one. We will draw our top enemy card, and we have a blue Nightwalker. <laughs> yeah, let's see, Cedric. Let's see what you can do to him. Well, I'm realizing since we moved him, we can't attack with him. I, he's not like the regular companion where you can move and attack. He can only do one or the other. So since we moved him, and I don't really... Well, yeah, you know, let's do it. We're going to have him move into this space for movement three. That was our one action by Thorgar. Thorgar is then going to do his move action. He'll move one, two. Now he'll have to take a point of damage for that. That will be his third point of damage. But now we'll have to read waypoint token five. Beyond this point, the natural caves give way to carved stone, mostly ancient mines stripped of their golden lods. The tracks on the floor indicate many underground halls have been captured by the Scarlet Cultist and his blasphemous followers, some of whom are actually guarding the entrance. Oh, great. Place and connect the map tile 22B and 33B to tile 7B as shown. Place the following elements as shown. Okay, we'll do that. Oh, we have to place another Nightwalker out. Okay, and if there are four or more heroes, from what I understand, I still only have three heroes for anything in this uh, this book, so I don't have to do the blue Ifrit. This is what it looks like, and then it'll be connected to right where Thorgar is. Well, I've got to say I'm thoroughly enjoying this revealing tiles as we're going, so I don't know exactly what's going to happen. Oh, it's great. Uh, so we have now another Nightwalker here. He doesn't have any special abilities. You can see him over here. They're both going to be controlled by Thorgar. We do have a story event three, so that's probably where I need to go. But I'm not going to leave Cedric over here alone with that Nightwalker. I was thinking that we, if I moved Thorgar in here for his third movement, would dominate him. But no, he's considered two characters. But at least that way, Cedric is not going to get dominated. We do know that likely this guy then is going to come over there and heal him based upon their AI. But I think let's still try and hammer at him. What do you say? These Nightwalkers are resistant to everything except for arcane attacks. I love that our Thunderstriker is an arcane attack. So we are going to focus. That's why we have four auto successes. We'll roll. That's terrible. We're going to use our reroll ability to reroll these two. Thank you, Divine Aid. And that's still not great. <laughs> we'll get rid of this. Uh, oh, we do get to do a critical. I was hoping we could KO him. That's not going to happen. Just so you know, if enemies control its area, heroes in the area cannot reroll dice. But be they do not control the area because we have two characters and they have this wild presence considered as two characters. First things first, let's see what our critical is. And he gets minus one attack. I'll, I'll take that. We're attacking him for a total of six damage. He can roll three blue dice for defense. He does have one armor, so that's going to block one. So he's only taking up to five. And we'll roll. And that blue one went off. That's two shields. Lightning bolts are not a shield. So he's taking a total of three damage, which, of course, it's going to get healed in just a second. <laughs> Oh, that's annoying, but I, I, we'll put it on him. We'll move to that encounter phase. Let's go ahead and flip our next card. Activate all F enemies. Oh, they are F enemies. So they're going to activate both of them. 
We're going to activate the Nightwalker in our location, and unfortunately his preferred target is going to be Cedric. I kind of feel bad for that. He's probably going to die here. He does have one armor, but he only has four health. Move to engage. He's already engaged. Attack with Spectral Hand. Spectral Hand, he'll only have one auto success because he does have that critical of minus one. So we have one auto success to start with. And then four blue dice. One, two, three, and four. Let's give him a roll. Let's see how much he hits him for. One, two, three, four damage. And he has one, two. He has three stars. So he's going to get a second attack. <laughs> Yeah, poor Cedric. I mean, the nice thing is he at least will get the a brunt of that second attack. So let's see it happen again. I'll do it right now. Uh, he doesn't... Okay, one, two, two damage. That's enough. Oh, well, Cedric, we thank you for your service, but you were just killed. That's two damage, one armor. That takes him out. He only had four health to begin with. I didn't even get to activate him. Uh, well, I, I guess I moved him. That just didn't seem worth it. Now it states here, if not engaged with at least two plus heroes, use guard two. But there's and guard two states move up to five areas towards the most wounded enemy. There are no wounded enemies except for him. He is the wounded enemy, so I think he'll stay where he is. And I think that's important because the next uh, Nightwalker who has no line of sight. At least I don't think so. Let's see. Holy moly! Would you say he has line of sight? Uh, maybe he does. <laughs> So if he had line of sight, that'd be one, two, three, that'd be four areas. That's still, he's still going to use his plus anyways. This Nightwalker will move to engage the closest hero. So that will be Thorgar. Then if charged and in the same area with a wounded enemy, yes, use healing surge too. So what he's going to do is move into the same area. He will then heal three HP. So he's going to heal that other Nightwalker to full. And he's going to suffer just one damage for doing that. So he'll take one and the other guy will heal for three. This is where we get to see some of these demon enemies working together. Ah, I don't like it. So heal the three damage. This one will just take one damage. And now we have four enemies here, essentially four character enemies. So Thorgar is definitely dominated. So he right now, or actually I should say the enemies are controlling that area. So that would mean we cannot reroll dice. We'll move to that event phase. Let's go ahead and flip our top event card. This is the one that we seated in, the 15. All non-engaged heroes may immediately visit the Emporium building. Uh, buildings and stash cannot be used. So we could have people go to the Emporium. I don't feel like we really need to. So I'm gonna just keep pressing on. So one of the viewers mentioned using tracker tokens for our power cooldowns, which I thought was a great idea instead of having to turn them and flip them sideways. Uh, but I decided I'm going to use dice. The nice thing about dice is you can track it just by the pips on there. So when I use a power, I'll just put, put the uh, die on there based upon how many rounds until they cool down. So you can see here, I've got three of them here. All of them are going to ready during the time phase. And then Icarus doesn't have any damage. Everyone has their magic shields. Oh, except for Thorgar. Thorgar will gain one of his shields back. And I think we're good to go. Thorgar might be surrounded by enemies, but that's not going to phase him. Let's go ahead and have him activate. He's going to have one attack the other. We're going to have the Nightwalker that doesn't have minus one attack target another blue enemy with its on hand attack. So this will be our first action. We're going to command it. <laughs> This Nightwalker has two auto successes. We'll roll four blue dice and he gets, uh, what, one, two, three, four total damage with a lethal two, which means that will do an automatic two damage to that other Nightwalker. That's beautiful. For the other two damage, one is going to be blocked by the armor and then we'll roll one blue die for the other point of damage and they get a star. I can't remember. Yeah, Star is an additional defense, so he didn't get to do any additional damage, but at least he did two points of damage to that Nightwalker. Thorgar is then going to go ahead and use his Thunder Strike. Now, something else I did, you guys, I switched my Soul Shards to a Tracker. It's just a lot easier than trying to track with all those tokens. So I have 38 Soul Shards right now. I'm going to use five of them, one, two, three, four, five, to power up this attack. Now, these guys have a pretty annoying ability called Warden 2. Hero attacks performed against other enemies in its area cause minus two hits. And I believe that's going to be for each of them now because they're doing that for each other. So I'm going to have to subtract out two. If I was attacking with a non-arcane attack, it would be minus three, you guys, which is rough. We also will not be able to re-roll any of our dice. So right now I'm focusing for my second attack. So normally I'd have four automatic successes, but I'm going to have to lose two of those because of the blasted um, Warden 2 effect. 
And the one I need to say that I'm targeting, I mean, I'm hoping that I get the star here for the AO, AOE. I'm targeting the one that does not have the minus one attack. So that's the two seal Nightwalker. He has one damage on him right now. We got to get eight more. <laughs> we'll roll. We did get the star. Beautiful. Okay, we can't do anything with this. But so let's see. We have one, two, three, four total hits. So let's, and we get a critical, and we get to KO them. Awesome. So they're both knocked over, which means they do not get their uh, their armor. They each are going to get a critical. So for the first one, this is the one that I'm targeting first. He will gain minus one health. So now he only has eight, seven health remaining, actually. He's getting hit for one, two, three, four total damage. He can roll three blue dice for defense. And he gets one, two shield, so that means we did two damage. <laughs> Man, these guys are going to be tough. That means he has a total of four damage on him, so we still have to do five more to take him out. Okay, the second one. So the second one will do the same thing. We have one, oh, we have to do the critical first. Let's grab our critical token. And we have, oh, he's going to be blinded. Sweet. A blinded enemy, if activated, must apply the plus rule as normal, but without performing any attacks that require line of sight. He will also roll three dice for defense, and he gets one, two, so he takes two damage as well. So he will have four damage on him. We also need to do another five on him. <laughs> we'll go ahead and draw our encounter card, and we have scout. Activate one enemy, otherwise spawn one enemy. Hmm. I think what I want to do is I want to activate... Yeah, I want to activate the non-blind one because the blind one will heal. The non-blind one won't heal. So the non-blind one is the one that does not have the minus one to its attack. It will do its range zero. Uh, it says move to engage. It is. It's going to stand up from being KO'd. And it's going to attack with spectral hand. If not engaged with at least two plus heroes, use guard two. Guard two states that it will move up to five areas towards the most wounded enemy. It's already there. And the Spectral 2 is 2 auto damage plus 1. Well, actually, yes, they are going to dominate because when he stands up, he's considered two characters. So it'll be 3 auto damage and 4 blue dice, and that's on Thorgar. These interactions with the AI, oh, it's brutal. <laughs> so he's going to stand back up. He's going to dominate and totally attack Thorgar. The nice thing is, though, he's not healing his comrade over there. So if I have Ariel go next, because she has an arcane attack, maybe, just maybe we can take one of them out. He's got three auto successes, four blue dice. Oh, that was not a bad roll. Lethal two, though, we have to remember that. So two points of these damage go immediately through. One, two, but we do have one of the magic armor, so that'll block one of them. Then Thorgar will take another point of damage. That will put him at four points of damage in total. That was these two. Then we have the three damage here. One's blocked by the armor that he has, and then he'll have to roll two blue dice. And let's see what he gets. Two shields. Awesome. All right, Ariel, let's have you swoop in for the kill, huh? We're going to have you move into here. We're then going to use the magic bolt. Target enemy will suffer two HP. We're going to do that on the one that already has five damage. So they have seven. We only need to get to nine. And actually, I'm wrong. We only need to get to eight because he has this one permanent damage on him. So he has eight out of his nine damage. Let's hammer on him. We're going to use our Thunderlord for our attack, but we're going to use our Archmage robe here that says once per quest, use any level of one of your powers, ignoring the soul rank. Yeah, three red dice. I will take that. We're also going to use the dancing lights. We're going to do that, though, on the one that's blinded and is already down. So we're going to give him minus one attack and minus one armor. Just that way, it's going to soften him up for everyone else. So I am happy about that because I'm assuming I'm going to take the other guy out. I'm hoping I can do it. Now, we are going to focus. So we get one auto success with our focus, but they still have the warden effect. So that will actually put me to having minus one. And I'm going to use this to help me remember. I have minus one hits right now. <laughs> but I am going to roll three red dice and one blue die. And we're not in the same area as them, so we can still get that reroll. So I can have Thorgar help me with the reroll. I can use my reroll. Yeah. All right. Let's see what we do. We only got one lightning. I was kind of hoping for two lightning. Oh, uh, let's take the chance. Because if we can do two lightning, we're doing area of effect. So I think I'm going to use my uh, my Archmage robe. robe. Still has the once per round reroll one hitter defense die. Come on, lightning bolt. Come on, lightning bolt. Ah, well, okay, two additional hits. <laughs> 
Ah, but that means we're going to overkill this guy so bad. We KO him for sure, so that means he has no armor. Then I'm going to lose this hit for this one. We're hitting him for one, two, three, four. He can only roll three dice, and he only has one health left. I mean, I'll just roll him quick. He defended for two out of the three, so he'll st still take two damage, and that means he's toast. He will drop for us a loot token, which I'll place in that space, and three soul shards. So we'll go 34, 35, 36. We're at 36 soul shards. Overall, I'm pretty happy with that. I was really hoping for that area of effect, but it is what it is. I'm going to then activate Tristan for my second uh, action. Unfortunately, he's going to take a third point of damage to move into that spot. Oh, that means if he goes into there... I wanted him to go in there and attack that Nightwalker, but that means he's going to die when he walks out of there because he'll take his fourth point of damage. Yeah, I think that's worth it. I think he will have done his duty. <laughs> Let's do it. So he'll take his third point of damage. He'll run into here. We now are dominating because we're considered two characters. He is knocked over, so that means he's considered no characters. And we no longer have to worry about the Warden 2 effect because there aren't two of them in that space. We're attacking him, not another uh, enemy. But we do still have to remember this is not an arcane attack, so that will take away the domination. So we will still just roll two red dice for our attack. Come on, Tristan, let's see what you do. That's two points of damage. He rolls two blue dice for defense. He blocks one, so he'll take one point of damage. That puts him at five. This might be the end of our friend Tristan. <laughs> let's see. We'll flip. We have activate all dexterity. There aren't any otherwise activate one enemy. Yeah, he's going to get up and he is going to attack. That is because our mercenary Tristan is a strength hero. So he's going to move to engage, attack with spectral hand. And if not engaged, he is engaged with two plus heroes. His spectral hand is two with four dice. If he survives this attack, he is the best mercenary in the world. <laughs> He gets hit for one, two, only two damage, and he has one armor, so he'll block one with his armor. So if he can roll a shield here, he's still alive. And he rolls a shield, he's still alive! He is the best! He is not going down without a fight. That's amazing. Ah, oh, crap, you guys. I totally should have remembered that he was blinded. He shouldn't even have been able to attack. That's okay. I'll have that happen next time. Not to mention, he also has minus two hits here, one from Ariel and one from the critical he took. Yeah, I'm... Oh, well. It worked out this time, but next time I'll use the blind effect. I am personally hoping, though, with Icarus here, we can just take him out, no problem. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, ow. We step into those brambles. Icarus will take one point of damage, which will heal at the end of the round anyways. He'll use his first action to move into here. We now have two, three, four to two, so we are dominating. We will use our ability or action to do an accurate strike so we can attack him twice. We have our three auto successes. We do get the domination fourth success, but then we're attacking him with a non-arcane attack. So we go back down to three. We're going to roll four blue dice and we get one, two, three, four total damage. I am going to have, uh, because they're no longer uh, controlling the area, I'm going to have Thorgar use his divine blessing so we can reroll these two blue dice. Come on, give me hits, give me hits. Oh, that's a good hit. I don't get the slow effect. I don't get to ignore his armor. But we do hit him for one, two, three, four, five. So he's taking four points of damage. One, two, three, four. He'll roll three blue dice for defense. Oh, he's got minus one armor, you guys. Yeah, so I'm hitting him for five damage because he he does have minus one armor. So five damage, three blue dice, and that one goes flying off. Those are both misses. That's one. So he just took four damage. Five plus four is nine. It's exactly what we need. We don't even need to use this accurate strike. He'll give us another loot token, and we'll gain another three soul shards. So we'll go up to 39. We'll then go ahead and pick up both of these loot tokens, and we get 10 coins and a treasure. Our treasure is ooh, a sapphire. Once per round, your next weapon attack inflicts a lightning bolt or a star KO. Ooh, man, I need bigger backpacks. Nobody can carry that. Oh, wait, I forgot. Thorgar did use something, so he does have space. So I'll drop this there, and then Thorgar can pick it up. Everyone has gone this round, so we'll go ahead and end it. We'll discard this card, and let's move to the time phase. I am really liking the dice. Look at this. Just take that one off. Take this one down to a 1. Take this one down to a 2. Take this one down to a 2. Heal one on Icarus, and we should get one magic armor back on to Thorgar. Perfect. Well, you know what they say, no rest for the weary. Let's go ahead and start this next round and have Icarus move, our, move himself all the way to story event three. 
It's going to move one here, take that one point of damage again. Say, like, gosh darn those brambles. <laughs> Can I find a way to dodge them? <laughs> one, two, three. And then he's going to go down these stairs to four. That's his first action uh, to do a dash. Let's see what story event three is. The first hero to reach the large central hall is the only one who can catch a glimpse of the crimson robes of the Hellraiser as he disappears beyond a gap that is immediately closed by a wall of solid rock. Before the hero stands a metal altar, and a bit further are two pillars emitting terrific lightning. Examining the metal structure, Marcus tells the party, I think I've read about this somewhere. Yes, it... It must be a contraption used by dwarven miners. That wall will only recede when touched by a powerful electrical bolt transmitted from the two pillars to the central structure. The problem is the lighting is lethal for anyone not properly protected. I dare say your gems, as they are now, should be resistant enough to divert a large portion of that energy. Yet, if I were you, I would never risk finding out. We must stop this demented cult, but not at the price of our lives. I will pray for you. <laughs> you know we're going to do that. Place one charge token over location C and one charge token over location D. Repeat this if four more heroes initially face the quest. No, there's only three heroes. Once per hero per quest, each hero can spend one action to pick up one and only one of the charge tokens. Once done, unless saved, the hero suffers one HP. The carry charge can be dropped in the hero's area by spending an action. These charges can only be used to proceed with this story event task as described below and cannot be used for other powers or items. If a hero dies while carrying a charge, move the charge back to its original location. That hero only may pick it up again once resurrected. When all charge tokens are moved from location C and D and dropped on the ground in the story event 3 area, go to 9.23. Here we have the two charges. We're going to have to spend two movement points to go here, spend an action to pick it up, get ourselves back here and spend an action to drop it back to that location. Once we do that, we get to move to the next part of the story. Unfortunately, Icarus has used all of his movement plus his dash, so he's done. We're going to go ahead and activate Thorgar next. He's going to go ahead and pick up this item, the Sapphire. Sweet. He's going to move one, take one point of damage. That actually hurts him a lot. He's at five damage. So I think what he's going to do, for a free action, he's going to use Purify to heal two HP on uh, Ariel. So that'll heal her to full. And then spend one of his two actions to heal himself four HP. So that means I think he only has one damage left uh, using Heal Wounds. He's moved one space, he'll move two, three, and he'll dash for four, moving into this spot. Then Ariel will go ahead and spend one action to use Tristan. Tristan's going to move here and he's going to die in the brambles. <laughs> After everything he's done, he's going to die because of brambles. Really? Well, I, I just don't want him out in case we do have a spawn by an event card, because he's considered a hero for those. And if he's just going to die when he moves out of that space, it just seem to make sense but ah Tristan you live in our memory we'll then have Ariel move one two three and she's so nimble four because she can ignore all hindrances she has one more action so she'll pick this one up now she has to save if she doesn't save she'll take a point of damage she's looking for a hit symbol and she gets it great so no damage that will end this round. Let's go ahead and draw our next event card. And we have Remember Tomorrow. Oh, this is a new one. Each hero can refresh one of their used powers. Unless save, each hero uh, becomes slowed. So I think each one has to save individually. Okay, only uh, Ariel and Thorgar have used items. Let's go ahead and do the Purify for Thorgar. He will ready that one up. And we'll do our Ice Manipulator, no question, for Ariel. We'll start with our save for Icarus because he rolls two dice and he doesn't get it. So he's going to be slowed. Of course he's going to be slowed now. So I'll grab that. Then Thorgar will go next. He also needs a star. He's only rolling one and he gets it. And then we need a hit for Ariel and she does not get it. So Ariel is also slowed. While slowed, a hero can only perform free action activities and only one movement or combat or action activity. Well, considering there's no enemies on the board, it's actually a great time to be slowed. <laughs> so Icarus will heal by one, will ready magic, uh, the magic bolt. This will go down to one. We will also put the command down to one as well. We'll start with Ariel. The only thing she'll be able to do is move into this space. She cannot do an action. Uh, Icarus here will be able to, he could do a move. 
Yeah, well, let's just leave him there. Icarus won't do anything this round. He's just going to sit around, and then that way he can get rid of his slow token, and so can Ariel. So both of them just got rid of their slow tokens. And then Thorgar will be able to spend two of his movement. He's not slow. He's wondering what's going on with those two. <laughs> He's going to move here for two movement. He's going to pick this up for one action. We'll have to see if he saves, but then we'll move back into here. And I could, for a second action, drop it there. Yeah, I mean, I might as well. Uh, we need to get the other one from Ariel anyway, so we won't move the story until next round. He has to roll to save, and he doesn't save. So he'll take one point of damage. That will put him at two total points of damage. Okay, now we're going to go to the end of the round. We'll just discard the Remember Tomorrow card. And then for readying, we'll just ready the Heal Wounds and Command so everyone has their powers ready in the time phase. Now let's see what happens during this event phase. Well, I feel like there's no time like the present. Let's go ahead and drop our second charge here. And that means we can resolve story event three. And I should mention that was Ariel's first action. So Ariel is going first. A powerful discharge of energy leaves the altar and crashes against the stone wall, brought to life by the lightning. It animates and starts sliding inside and opening in the rocks. The gate is open, and the party now faces a cultist just as he finishes writing a pentagram on the floor, using the blood from his own wrist. Ugh. As he completes the bloody ritual, the man is engulfed by green flames as he screams at the heroes, My master will complete the ritual to open the arcane portal, and it will be the end of you all! The fire disappears, leaving behind the body of the cultist, now a powerful and ethereal guardian demon protecting the passage as other opponents rush to help the creature. Discard all charges over Story Event 3. Place the Story Event 3 revealed sign on top of the event deck. Open the star spawn gate. Remove the rock wall near the spawn gate from the quest. Place the red night walker in the, the spawn location. Spawn two enemies, because there's three heroes minus one as the red night walker, so two left. And resume play until the red night walker dies. Then go to 9.24. <laughs> the red night walker! First things first, I want to show you the night walker's scroll. Now, there's something that I've missed the whole last scenario or quest and a half. You see that little symbol up there? I believe that means that they're flying. I have been KOing them to get rid of their armor. I can't do that. So I am so sorry that I missed that. But can you blame me? Look at how tiny that is. <laughs> they need to make that bigger or put it on this card or something because I don't see it anywhere on here. So anyways, I'm sorry I missed that. I'll make sure to put in the comments that I missed that in the other videos. Uh, but what I want you to see is he has a dark presence. This enemy counts as three figures for controlling. He has a void field. Heroes in its area cannot roll reroll dice and must ignore all star results. He's a guardian. Heroes attacks um, can not directly target other enemies in its area. <laughs> Ugh. Okay, so I just wanted you to see how he worked. I have, uh, I'm going to spawn two enemies. So our first one is a green Ifrit. Okay, he's going to get a power. So let me grab a power card. His power will be all attacks inflict plus one and bash, because why not? And then our second enemy will be a raider, a blue raider. And his power will be all heroes performing attacks in this enemy's area cannot use their lightning results. Oh, that's interesting. So we know the red Nightwalker will be in the star location, but the other two will start with the Ifrit. He'll be in the, oh, we got to reroll. There's no gremlin one. He'll be in the lightning location. And then the bandit will be in, <laughs> come on. Uh, let's see. He'll also be in the lightning location. So those two enemies will be in the lightning location. The red uh, Nightwalker will be in the star location. Well, this puts us in a little bit of a pickle. I've always been able to help Ariel stay safe by keeping her behind my other two, but we're being kind of sandwiched on two sides here. I feel like her best attacks are actually against this guy because arcane attacks are the only ones that don't uh, have reduced attack values. So I think I'm going to have her attack him. I believe she can. If we look here, there's the X and oh wait, where's our X in this spot? Oh boy, maybe not. Let's see. Um, no, I don't see it crossing anything. Yeah, I definitely think she can attack. She's within range two. He has 14 health. Oh, and I need to get rid of these. Sorry, you guys. I need to get rid of these, and I need to put this on top of the event deck. So let's go ahead and try and hammer at this guy, and then maybe we'll run away? I don't know. Let's see. We're going to hammer on this Nightwalker right off the bat. So what we're going to do, we're going to first start with a Magic Bolt. He's within range two. He's just going to suffer two damage. He has 14 health, so now he has 12 left. 
Then we're going to throw some dancing lights in his face. That also is within range too. And he will have minus two hits, attacks, and minus two armor. He only has two armor, so now he has no armor. We're then going to use our ice manipulator, which has two successes. We're going to use our second uh, action to focus it for three. Then we're going to roll one red and four blue dice. Come on, hit him hard. Well, we didn't roll any stars, and I was really hoping for that, but we are going to keep these ones for sure. We're going to use our arcane robe to re-roll one of these three. Come on, come on. Be a nope, nothing. Then we're going to use Thorgar. He's going to use his divine aid to let us re-roll these two blue dice. Come on, we need a star. We need a star. There's a star. Great. That means we're going to stun him. There's nothing stating here that we can't stun him. We can stun flying enemies. <laughs> we just can't KO them. So the total amount of damage coming at him is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. He rolls 4 blue dice. Oh, wow, I need to use one of these. So I have 7 hits right now minus 6, 5, 4. So we just dealt him 4 damage plus the 2 from before. We just dealt him 6 damage. That's almost half his health right there. Ariel, you are awesome. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep uh, Icarus over here with Ariel to kind of help protect her. I don't really want her to move this way or that way. Instead, what I'm going to do is just have her move nowhere. I'm, I'm going to leave her there. Uh, I'm going to have Thorgar go next. He's going to run up to this guy, and they're going to fight it out because he has the arcane uh, thunder striker, and so that won't get reductions in hits. And then Icarus can try and protect her from these guys over here. So, yeah, I think that's it for her turn. Let's draw our encounter card. We'll draw our top card, and we have activate all M enemies. Are any of these M's? Yes, the Efreet is an M, so he'll be activated. The green Efreet has no one in line of sight, so he'll move one area towards the closest hero. If there's at least one hero in line of sight, no, there will be nobody in line of sight. Otherwise, move up to two areas towards the closest hero. So he's going to move one plus two, three areas towards the closest hero. He'll move one, two, three. Yeah, he's coming in from behind. <laughs> Having Thorgar go into this location on his own is risky because the enemies will still control that area. And if you look at the Night Demon or the Night Walker's uh, attack at range 0, 1, or 2, he will attack with the Spectral Hand. And then if the enemies control the area, he's going to attack again two times. And then he has an ability that if during its activation, this enemy has dealt damage with two plus of its attacks in a row at the same hero, that hero becomes stunned. So he is stunned though right now. So maybe we can sneak in enough hits to take him out. Uh, I don't know. This will be interesting. I still feel like it's better than having him come into this area and then making it so Ariel cannot use any of her star effects. So I'm going to have him move. He will have one, two to move here and three to move here. And he's going to use his hammer. We can't use star effects, but we can still use lightning. We can still critical and we can still focus. So we have four auto successes right now. We'll roll up. We can't re-roll anything. So we did get a, uh, a lightning bolt. That means we get to draw a critical. I think there's like, we have five in here left. <laughs> We're going to stun him again. That will just wound him because he's already stunned. So that will give him another point of damage. That will put him at what uh, seven damage. He's now at half health. Sweet. Then we're dealing him one, two, three, four, five, six total damage. He has no armor, so he'll roll four blue dice. Uh, six, five, four. So he just took four damage. <laughs> He's at 11 damage. He only has three health left. Our second action will be using our blessed hammers. We'll roll it up. Uh, we only have one. We can critical and bash. I don't want to bash him. I want to keep him in that space, but I'm going to critical him again. Let's see what he gets. He gets KO. He can't be KO'd. So I think that just gets discarded. Bummer. But we did hit him for one point of damage. <laughs> Come on. Don't roll a shield. Don't roll a shield. He did. Okay. So that one didn't do any damage. But I will still take that. Let's draw our encounter card. And we have, I was waiting for this, fight. Activate three enemies. Yeah. Ugh. All three of them are going to activate. Then we'll go ahead and shuffle these up. We'll activate the blue raider first. So he'll move up to two areas towards the closest hero and attack the closest hero in line of sight within two areas with the knife. And the knife is just two auto hits and poison. That means he'll jump himself over to here and I guarantee you he has line of sight on them. And of course, nobody has any damage in that spot. So he's gonna go for the one that has the least total amount of health and that would be Ariel. He'll hit her for two damage, but she does have two magic defense to block it. But she will still get poisoned. So she will have to take a point of damage during the time phase. 
The Ifrit is next. He has someone within range one. If enemies control the victim's area, move and engage. No, but he's going to attack with Flame Strike. So that will do one auto damage plus uh, two red dice. And he's going to get this. So it's actually two auto damage. And he will bash, uh, bash. Well, let's see. Right now he's actually going to against Ariel. You know, I might take that. I was going to actually have him bash uh, Icarus out. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and use Icarus's taunt here so that this Ifrit attacks him because he's going to activate next. We've got two auto successes, rolling two red. Okay, he doesn't get, he gets AoE. Oh, bummer. That means it's going to hit uh, Ariel anyways. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, so let's do Ariel first. So it's hitting Ariel for one, two, three, four total damage. She's got one magic armor to block one of those. So that's for three. So she will take three damage. She can roll two blue dice to defend. And she gets a shield and that's it. So she'll take two damage for that. Ooh. Okay. She has four health left. <laughs> Then for Icarus, Icarus is getting hit for four damage. He still has two magic shields, so he'll block two of those, no problem. And then he has one armor. The other armor is negated here, so he'll only have to roll one die. And he gets, uh, yeah, he doesn't get anything for defense, so he'll take one point of damage. So even though he had all of that to be ready to get hit, he almost took the same amount as Ariel did. I don't think we actually rolled a lightning bolt there, so neither of them will take the fire damage. So I'm going to push them both and bash them over here. I think that's what he would have done. The final enemy to go is our red Nightwalker. I'm gonna go ahead and just discard the stun token. That's all we need to do. Now it's Icarus's turn. Now comes the question. That Nightwalker has no defense right now. He's not gonna have that next round. He's gonna have two armor. Uh, maybe I go in there. I'm gonna, I'm really worried about Ariel, but we've got tons of soul shards. If she needs, she can always go back and get herself, uh, you know, uh, she can die and then come back. That sounds terrible, but I almost feel like that's worth it. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to spend two to move here, three to move into this spot. So we are a total of three characters to three characters. I am going to attack. You know, I'm realizing we might just need to take him out to win this quest. So we have four auto successes because we are focusing, but then we're going to have to reduce that back down to three because this is not an arcane attack. So we'll move this down to three and let's go ahead and roll our dice and we can't re-roll this. So we have one, two, three, four, five total hits. We cannot use this ability because it uses a star, I believe. So we can't slow him, but with the five hits, he'll roll four defense dice and let's see, he gets one, two, three. So we only hit him for one damage. That puts him down to 12 damage. Okay, we just need two more hits here. We're gonna go ahead and use our accurate strike, perform an extra attack. That's our second action. This time though, we'll only have two auto successes instead of three because we're not focusing. I don't know you guys. We're rolling four blue dice. Come on, give me good stuff on these dice. Give me good stuff on this dice. No, look at that, one, two, three, three total hits. Okay, then he's rolling three dice for defense and he gets three shields. Oh, he blocked all of that. Oh, that little bugger. We'll then go ahead and draw our encounter card and we have elite assault. Of course we do. Activate all red enemies. So now the question is, does he have line of sight on Ariel? I don't know. Is that wall there? It's, it's really hard to tell on this tile. I, I think I'm gonna say yes. I think he does have line of sight on Ariel. Why that's terrible, you're gonna see in a second. He targets the one that is the most wounded. Well, we have both Thorgar and Ariel having two points of damage. But then the next step is the one with the least amount of health remaining. Ariel has the least amount of health remaining. So he's gonna move to engage and attack with Spectral Hand. Then he's gonna control that area because he's considered three and she's only considered one. So then he's gonna attack again with Spectral Hand. So I think we might just have our first dead hero. <laughs> If we look here, that's three auto successes, which by the way, when he gets there, that's gonna be four auto successes and four blue dice. And if he gets a lightning bolt, that's lethal three. She doesn't have any of her magic armor left. I'm, yeah, we might have our first dead hero in our campaign. I, oh, he's gonna move himself right over to here and attack twice. I have a feeling he's only gonna need one attack. If only I hadn't taunted that last time. Oh man, and we had an area of effect anyways. I, you know, that's, Poor planning on my part. All right, four auto successes, <laughs> four blue dice. 
let's see what we get. We don't get any stars, so or lightning bolts, and only one star. So he doesn't get any visibilities here. Uh, four, five total hits. She'll roll two blue dice. Let's see. She blocks uh, none of it. So five hits plus the two is seven. She has just been killed. So she is going to turn into a ghost. When a hero dies, she becomes ethereal and her soul becomes weaker. In game turns, she loses one soul rank. Ow. So she's going to go from four, you guys, down to three. <laughs> now, I've got enough soul shards to be able to bring her back and actually put her back up to a higher rank. But still, we have to immediately do the following. Reduce the current soul rank by one to a minimum of one. Flip the hero card to the goal, ghost soul form. So we will do that. She is now ghost aerial. Oh, this is so sad. We're going to discard any body conditions, so I'll discard that poison. <laughs> it's not going to hurt her anymore. Uh, then we have discard all power cards related to the lost soul rank. So we lost one soul rank. We went from three to, yeah, so we lost one power. I don't even remember which power we got the last time. I think it was the magic bolt, honestly, was the one that we got the last time. Yeah, so I'm going to remove this for right now. Drop all item cards in inventory, including crowns and quest tokens, but not equipped items. Oh my gosh, so all of this is going to get dropped in her space and all of these coins. Okay, so I've got that. From this moment and until resurrection, this hero acts as a ghost soul following the following rules. Play the hero turn using the ghost soul activities. Uh, she can never count as a hero in play, including for controlling and dominating areas. Ignore any items and power cards unless explicitly indicated. Her power cards continue to rotate and refresh during the time phase. You skip the enemy turn, even if there are enemies in play. Oh, yeah, oh, interesting. Unless explicitly stated, she cannot be targeted. Uh, she is completely ignored by enemies and traps. Ignore any special game effects. Quest ends while a hero is in ghost form. That hero must permanently discard one of their equipped items. Oh, yeah, we do not want to have that. So let's see what her activities are. While in ghost soul form, during her turn, a hero is limited to the following three activities, which can be, formed, uh, can be performed once each in any order. You can do the soul shout. Use the soul shout detail on her hero card. That's allowing others to reroll. It's actually a reaction. We have a recall. Place the ghost soul hero in the same area as the active shrine. We do have an active shrine. That's good. When more than one shrine is present, you can choose. Move. Move using the same flying movement rules as the heroes, but ignoring all terrain. Her movement, I think, is five when she's in magic form. During each time phase, a ghost soul hero in the same area as the active shrine can spend soul points to return to life. The number of soul points needed to resurrect a hero is equal to their current soul rank. So, for example, I'm going to be at a level three right now. I have to send, spend three soul points. Well, that's like nothing. When we're resurrected, we can flip the hero card and return to full, full health state. Okay, well, I think we know what we're going to be doing for her. The one other thing that's going to happen is the Nightwalker gains a power. Every time an enemy kills one of the heroes, they gain a power. And he has Frenzy. <laughs> if wounded, which, yeah, he's wounded, uh, all attacks performed by this enemy inflict critical. Oh, okay. This is going to be fun. We need to take him out. We need to do this for Ariel. Well, you guys, that will end our round. This just looks so sad. <laughs> we'll discard event, our event card, and let's go ahead and start our next time phase. During the time phase, Icarus will heal by one point of damage. He'll gain two of his magic armor back. Thorgar has nothing. Oh, and this will tick down to two. Hers will still tick down. This one will tick down to one, and this one will tick down to two. Well, Thorgar, our healer, just saw one of his comrades go down. He is pissed. So he is definitely going to go into this space. He's going to move one, two, three, plus the dash. So it's first action to move in here. And he's going to hammer at this guy. This Nightwalker has 12 damage. We only need to do two more damage to get rid of him. Let's do it. Well, it's not a great roll, but we do have a lightning, so we do get to do a critical for to him. And remember, we can't re-roll because of his stupid, what is that called, void presence? Yeah, his void presence doesn't, or void field, doesn't allow us to re-roll. But he can still take a critical, and we'll grab this one, and it is minus two. Oh, I think that's going to work. Minus two, 14, he has 10, 12, 13, 14. <laughs> Uh, Thorgar and his hammer takes him out. He'll drop for us a treasure, which will be an elven plate. Oh, that looks cool. Uh, Icarus could hold that. 
And he'll give us four soul shards, so that'll be enough to resurrect uh, Ariel and some. One, two, three, four. We're now at 43 soul shards. If there are no enemies in play, go to 9.25. Nah, there's still two more enemies. Otherwise, continue reading this paragraph. The utter destruction of the Guardian Demon weakens the enemy ranks, but they still block access to the cave's galleries. Close the spawn gates, and then resume play until there are no more enemies. Well, I'm not going to lie, that felt super good. <laughs> Let's go ahead and flip our card for our encounter. Activate one enemy. Okay, the enemy that he has is the Ifrit, so the Ifrit will be activated. The Ifrit is within two range. The enemies are not controlling the area, so he's just going to attack with Flame Strike. We've got one auto success and two red dice. <laughs> All lightning. So he's definitely going to get fire one. Uh, we can handle that. That'll only be one point of damage during the time phase. And he's doing minus one armor, but uh, with the one hit, he's got one magic defense. Doesn't do anything. Bring it. Icarus will go next. He'll move one, two, three, and then dash for four to get in the same space as the Ifrit, and he's going to attack. Oh, I almost forgot about the plus one attack and the bash here. So we're going to roll one more blue die for that. That lightning bolt will count as a defense with his scale armor. So he takes nothing there, but he is going to get bashed out of that space. I'm not entirely sure where he'd get bashed to. Let's say he gets bashed into this location. We're going to go ahead and focus this attack, but it's a non-arcane attack. And this guy has arcane or non-arcane resistance. So we only have three auto successes. We're going to roll four blue dice. And we get a heck of a lot of shields. I will take this one. We will go ahead and have Ariel use her soul shout. Target hero can reroll any of their hit or defense dice. So we'll reroll these three. Come on. I need a star if I can. That would be great. Oh, there's a star. So we did a total damage of one, two, three, four, five, six. We're ignoring armor. That doesn't matter. He doesn't have any. But we're going to slow him, which is great. Six damage. We'll get rid of the two armor he has and deal him four out of the five damage that he needs. Oh, we almost killed him. It's so easy to forget about this, you guys. We have this fire shield, so Icarus should have taken fire one. Sorry about that when he attacked. So do you guys remember how I said we were one damage away from taking out that Ifrit? We totally took him out <laughs> because we are dominating. So we get plus one success. That's five. He has five health. We'll take him out. But that does mean that we're going to place a fire one token in this location. And that means we'll take our third fire token. So we're going to have three fire tokens. Sorry if this is a little bit confusing. I had to backtrack because I remember that in the middle of activating enemies. <laughs> He'll drop a loot token and Icarus will pick that up. It'll be 50 coins and two more soul shards. So we'll go up to 45. We'll then move to the encounter phase a second time, <laughs> and we have Bloodlust. Activate all wounded enemies. No, we don't have any wounded enemies now. So activate all enemies using their plus regardless of range. That blue raider will just move two areas towards the closest hero, which is Icarus, and attack him with the knife. The knife is just two uh, auto hits. He's got two armor, so that's not going to do anything to him, but he is going to take the poison. And he'll move himself into this location with Icarus. Finally, for Ariel's turn, we're just going to do the soul recall so that during the time phase, we can pay the three uh, soul shards to bring her back. We'll then move to the event phase and we have heroes gain two. <laughs> so that's great. Thanks for the soul recall. We'll go up to 47 soul shards. Thank you. During that time phase, then we will go ahead and spend the three soul shards, one, two, three, to bring her back. She is uh, now back to her non ethereal form. And I do have enough soul shards to level her up directly to level four. You do that during the time phase. So let's do that now. So 10, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we have 28 soul shards. She's going to be back to her level four. She'll get her mana bolt back. She has her six health back. And yeah, all is right with the world. Also during the time phase, Icarus will take four points of damage uh, and then heal one because of the troll ring. So he'll have three points of damage. We'll have to see if he saves to get rid of that poison. Uh, Thorgar over there will take one point of damage and then get rid of this. We'll then tick these down. So we still don't have the ice manipulator and we still don't have the accurate strike. And I think we're ready for the next round. Now you guys let me know, but... I think I'm just going to take out that blue raider, but technically if I do that and Ariel hasn't picked up her items, does she not get to keep them? Because otherwise what I do is I would just dink around for a round so that I could get her over there to pick up her items, but I'm not going to have you guys sit here for that. I'm just going to take out the blue raider and assume that she can get over there because come on, it's the blue raider. We're going to be able to hit him 
pretty hard between Thorgar. Icarus is already dominating him. Yeah, so let's take him out, and then if you guys are okay with it, I'm just going to assume that Ariel can pick up her stuff. First things first, though, let's see if we can get rid of that poison. We cannot, so we did not save for that. Let's start off with Icarus. Icarus will focus his attack. He's dominating that blue raider, so he has five automatic successes. He's going to roll these dice. Six, seven, eight. He can't use his lightning bolt abilities, but <laughs> with that attack, that's going to take him out. <laughs> so easy. He only needed six. We did eight damage. All of the enemies are toast. Let's go ahead and read. Of course, not before we gain our 29th soul shard and we gain another loot token, which will be another treasure. We'll grab our treasure and we have immediately gained 50 crowns. We don't even have 50 crowns left in the bank. <laughs> Destroying all the demons and evokers frees the way to the tunnels below the Thunder Mountains. The gate to the subterranean halls appears cold and ominous, a dire warning of the evil patiently waiting beneath the caverns deep. Rewards. Remove the magic key token. I never even saw that. And the Green Raider companion from the quest. Proceed to quest 10. <laughs> Well, we had our first death of our team. We're still doing okay. We only have 29 soul shards, actually. We had to use a bunch to get her back, but totally worth it. I think we're all right. We just need to know that we need to be a little bit more careful with Ariel. <laughs> uh, but I had a lot of fun with that quest. I cannot believe how much happened during that quest. So much stuff. We fought the Hellspawn. Then we fought the Red Knight Walker. Oh, man. Okay, I'm excited for the next one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you at the next stop.